Welcome to Truth, Love, and Madness, starring Zakari Travis. This week's episode, uh, Death Terror. Welcome back to How to Live Successfully with Depression in a world filled with hate, division, and lies. This is Truth, Love, and Madness, um, and um, welcome back for another exciting episode. And this week I present to you a interview um, with um, famed psychologist, although they don't like to call him that anymore. Um, they call him an anthropologist and an author. Um, but his name was Ernest Becker, and uh, he had controversial views about the mental health industry and how we treat mental health um, based on his teachings and learnings uh, from being a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a professor of all that sort of stuff. Um, and then he was ostracized from the industry for his views, which is like, uh, oh, do you get to wear feathers? No, that's being an ostrich. Oh, no, that means you're an Austrian then, does it? No, that's Osterreich. Um, he was ostracized, cast away, put aside, forgotten about for his controversial views on mental health. Um, so we're going to be presenting a, oh, I'm, uh, there's no we, it's me, I'm going to be presenting an interview. Um, this is based on my show, Truth, Love, Love and Madness, which has been uh, going doing the rounds in uh, Fringe Theatre and uh, will be coming up in November at the Bridge House Theatre in Penge. Should you wish to get tickets, they will be in my blog. Uh, the link will be there. Um, and I, in my show, I do a, an interview. I interview myself playing the interviewer and Ernest Becker. Um, so I present to you now a brief uh, in, insert of what the interview is like. And I filmed it, especially for this occasion. Lucky. QVT. Good evening. Ernest Becker was born in 1924 in Massachusetts and became a renowned author and anthropologist. His most famous work being The Denial of Death. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ernest Becker. Thank you. Mr. Becker, fascinating to have you here. It's a pleasure. My first question, your book, The Denial of Death, how did this come about? Well, interesting really, it was after becoming an academic outcast that I decided to uh, stretch my inner maverick even further. Uh, this was in 1960. Yes, that's right, I'd become something of an outsider, certainly within the circles of academia, and something of a misfit because of my beliefs and what my instinct was telling me. And uh, what was that? That following traditional trains of thought and procedure was holding us back. It was while teaching in the classroom that I happened upon the idea to use Shakespeare to teach psychology. I would uh, dress up as King Lear or other characters from literature. This had such an effect and widened our level of understanding so much that I decided to approach other subjects using the same method. You taught anthropology using psychological textbooks and you used anthropological data as a basis for sociology. Yes, that's right. I soon realized the amazing links as well as the divisiveness of what we were doing. And what it also allowed was for my students as well as myself to see these things from a different perspective. And it's that which led to my most famous story, perhaps, was certainly within the circles of academia and psychological research. Which was? That the practice of psychiatry is a form of fascism. Oh, Mr. Becker, that is quite a statement. Uh, care to explain further? Yes, of course. It was over a period of time and study of people who were considered to be mentally ill that I saw, first of all, their treatment. And secondly, how unstable the staff were. Now, consider this question. What is wrong with being emotional and feeling sad? 
Uh, plenty of philosophers have argued over the years that the more we understand about our lives, uh, about, about life in general, about the universe, the sadder we become. I saw these people in these so-called hospitals who were so heavily medicated that they, they did not question. They could not question. They led a life of confused bliss. And then when the, the medication wore off, they would, they would wake from some semi-comatose state and for an instant see some kind of truth. Now, they were beaten back at this point, led to believe that they were mentally ill, when in fact they were simply reacting to the environment around them. Now surely, when one is faced with a reality that one is unhappy with or uncomfortable with or upset about, an action would be to rebel against it. Now the very act of rebellion is seen as disruptive and the response from the authority is to clamp down in a harsh and violent way. Every action leads to a reaction. And the one, one, when the one being beaten down reacts violently in return, they are then seen as the aggressors. I simply argued that this was an act of oppression against the weak and helpless. In, in fact, the very practice of psychology is an act of, repre of oppression. Now, I'm not the only one who thinks so, and I certainly hope I won't be the last. You were sacked from your role as assistant professor for stating such an idea. Yes, it was a little like comparing my boss, who himself was a psychiatrist, to Hitler. Now, this radical view followed you around and, and led to your unique classroom techniques. Tell me, what happened at your final posting in San Francisco State University? Well, this was a time of the Vietnam War, and uh, of course I was on the side of the protesters. Uh, a violent protest erupted on campus, and uh, of course the dean had pro-fascist views. Uh, I decided to speak up in support of the protesters, and I was probably quite vocal of my opinion of the Dean's fascist views. And this opened the door for you to write. There's anything any person with a radical view can do it is to write it down into a book and set it out into the world. I believe in finding the truth between the cracks and sometimes that truth can go against every single thing we have been led to believe. Just because someone a hundred years ago decided that something was the way that it was, it doesn't mean it still holds true today. The very point of science, and indeed of journalism, is to keep asking questions and keep searching for the truth. Now, when it comes to mental health, we have stood for too long in one position. We have accepted a story and we've fed it down the line. Mr. Becker, Thank you very much indeed. Well, there you have it, folks. Ernest Becker, renowned anthropologist and author. His book is The Denial of Death. And ask yourself this question as you gaze into the void of the mirror tomorrow morning. What is your perspective of the mental health industry? And have you been conditioned into a particular way to think. Thank you, thank you, and good night. Hmm. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. You know, after that, I feel a bit, a bit peckish. What say you? We, uh, we get a pizza, huh? Get a pizza. Um, garcon, menu. Oh, um. <laughs> Suddenly I don't feel very hungry. I think I'll just have a glass of water, please. Yeah, thanks, man. Joker. Um, that's it. So thank you for tuning in. And please check out my podcast, Mark and Zach in Real Life. We are uh, coming up with new material very shortly. Keep an eye on our Facebook group and you'll get updates. We are at Hip Not To Be Square on Facebook. And uh, please do like and subscribe. It helps boost my numbers. You know, I'm doing YouTube shorts, I'm doing reels, and uh, some of them seem a bit uh, weird, and they seem to be finding an audience. So um, check us out, check us out, check us out. All, the, all my different personalities come out to play. Thank you for tuning in, and um, I'll be seeing you same time, same bad channel, next time. 
be seeing you.